Hello and welcome to the video. This is an unboxing, build and maiden of this new model from Hobby King. Now this is the latest model from Avios at Hobby King. This is the Albatross. Wingspan of 1,620 millimeters or just under 64 inches. Length of 1,210 millimeters or about 47.6 inches. Weight 2.3 kilograms. The motors out there in the arms are two Aerostar 3536 H50 kV outrunners and running that are two Aerostar 30 amp reversing brushless ESCs. The propellers are 10 by 6 three bladed scale propellers and all the servos in here are 9 grams. Now, although you might notice in some of these images that it appears that it has landing gear, those are just molded plastic pieces in the side of the model. This is a classic flying boat design. It will take off grass, but if you have water of the best part about 100 yards wide, then you'll be able to get this down and take it off from that water too. It does have scale working flaps and they do help it fly nice and slowly. And we'll get to the flying in a little bit, but the flying characteristics are very similar to the bush mule plane that I looked at a while ago. Now the bush mule and things like the tundra have a lot in common. They are very easy to fly, very stable, well-mannered planes that have nice stall characteristics and very wide speed envelopes. So although this albatross appears very scale in its detail with all the paint application and decals applied as it comes out the box, it is a very, very gentle flyer. Because it is designed for taking off on water, and it will take off on grass, as I've already said, it does also have a rudder attached, and that's also slaved to the rudder channel inside too. So before we get into the detail, let me show you how this thing comes, and then we can put it together before we do a little flight. Now, this box is massive. The number of parts in this is relatively small, uh, so it's very, very quick and easy to build, but it does mean that when the box arrives, it looks like the postman is dropping off a dead body. The box itself is full colour printing all the way around, showing you different aspects of the model and also has all of the specifications on the side. And I do like boxes that have this kind of attention to detail. It always makes me feel like I'm 10 years old again, opening a very big Airfix model. Removing the top, the first thing we are presented with are the wings themselves. Now these are all ready to go, as you probably spotted, tons and tons of tape in here, which seems to be the way that uh, Hobby King seems to be packing their planes at the moment. So make sure you've got a nice sharp knife and just be a bit careful with it. But hopefully you can see here the decals are applied. Um, I love the fact that the servo linkages are all set up, they're using those kind of ball style linkages at the end. The paint application is very, very nice indeed. A bit of leading edge protection as well, which is good if you're going to be landing and taking off on things like water. The other wing is the same idea, um, but the paint application and the finish on the foam is very nice. Navigation lights at the end too. Next thing we're going to take out is the piece that goes across the middle so this is very bush mule like in the way it's going to go together now this central section has the two nacelles that has the escs and the motors in and it's going to be held onto top of the body just with two metal machine screws this has those plastic cowlings at the front and again it has the flaps along with a big cord with all the connections but it's got some nice scale detail on the inboard flaps too. Vertical stabilizer is absolutely massive but again the servo is there. A little pin at the bottom that's going to go into the, uh, the back of the model itself and be held in place with a little screw too. We have the two floats that go under the wings, again all nicely painted, held in place with a couple of screws. Nice to see that that's the case because that's going to get a little bit of potentially damage in landings. We have the horizontal stabiliser for the rear and that's actually run by two servos, we'll put them together in a minute. We're going to get one set of the scale props and then that's everything out the box apart from a little bag of bits. Now let's get the main event out which is going to be the body. I've got the camera mounted on its highest position here to try and fill everything in. So let me take the body out of the plastic and we can have the first look. 
So that whole front piece where the cockpit is, is removable um, and we have a big plastic skid at the front that's going to be there to help it skid over grass or water. Uh, the landing gear doesn't come down, that's just moulded in. This is where the wing is going to go over the top. Uh, lots and lots of room in here for batteries and everything else. We have the moulded hatches at the back, all the panel lines are very nice. We can see that tail a little bit clearer here, the little rudder that uh, is going to help with control when it is actually moving around in water. We have a navigation light dorsally as well. And the way it looks with the paint application and decals is very, very pretty indeed. So the next thing to do then is going to be put this together. The build is very, very quick. Just make sure you've got lots of room because as soon as you start putting the ends on the wings, then it starts to get a very big model indeed. Now you're going to have to glue the tail piece into place. I'm always a little bit sad that things like this have to be glued into place. It does mean that if they get broken, you're having to break glue seals. But I'm using this foam safe glue that sets up in a couple of hours. And then you just plug in the servo for the rudder and glue the vertical stabilizer in as well. And then there are two screws that hold the vertical stabilizer and rudder into place. Those are very long screws and they go underneath. You are going to need a very long thin screwdriver to pop those in and that doesn't come as part of the kit. While that tail is drying, next job is going to be putting the wings together. Now there is a little metal spar here that joins the two together. Be careful which way it goes up. It isn't straight. It's actually designed so the outer wings are slightly turned upwards. So make sure that's the right way round. And then plug in both the navigation lights and the controls for the aileron as well before sliding it home. It's held in place with two machine screws. I had to push on the wing tip really hard to get it seated into place so those two little screws engaged in the captive nuts that's at the end of it to hold it all into place. Once that's done next job is to install the pontoons on the end so they just push into place don't glue them and then on the other side use a couple of screws to hold them into position. The props push onto place, very similar to a lot of the scale planes that uh, Avios do at the moment. And then the front is just held on with this scale bell detail that you just screw on with your fingertips. Finger tight is good enough. You don't have to go crazy with this and it'll keep it into place. And the prop is connected to the motor with a little locking piece at the back. So the battery that I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use a slightly bigger battery here for my flying time that gives me about 12 minutes. I'm decided I'm going to use this, one of these. This is the Turnji Nanotech 4.0 and that's going to go into the nose. Now to lift up the canopy, you have to kind of slide it out of the way and with the battery in kind of a reasonably middle position, actually you don't have to have it rammed up in the nose or backwards, you can get the centre of gravity about right. So now it's all together and the glue is dry. Uh, follow the central gravity and the travel details that are in the manual. So here we are at the field. Uh, we're very lucky. Well, lucky in one way, I suppose, is the field next to where me and one of my we flying buddies normally fly is flooded. So we have a big expanse of water that we can play with. So initially started just to play taxiing around to see how responsive it was. I would increase the throws on the rudder quite a bit if you're going to be using it to taxi because you do need more throws than when you are in the air. So I'd probably set up a couple of dual rates on the radio for taxiing around because there just isn't enough authority. Now the ESCs are reversible so you can back away if you get too near to reeds or other obstacles in the water. But at this point, we decided that we were going to do another taxi and see how it felt. So the idea with this next pass was, again, just to see how much power it had and how controllable it was in the water. So the flaps were down, but I thought I would give it a little bit of a go. And it immediately wanted to take off. So I give it a little bit more power, had one little bounce, another bounce, and it is up. Now, the only thing that I had to do with the central gravity being about 80 millimeters back from the leading edge was play with the elevator. The elevator needed a little bit of trim. It wanted to go nose down. But once I got that trimmed in, it was flying absolutely beautiful. And the flying experience with this is very similar if you've ever flown a Tundra or if you've ever flown something like the Bush Mule. 
then you will have a very good idea of how well behaved this plane is. Now in the sunshine, those beautiful white and yellow details in the decal and paint look absolutely fantastic. And there is an awful lot of power. Responsiveness is very good in the high rates. And I've mixed a little bit of rudder into the motors, just about 20%, just to help in turns. Now at this point, I'm still putting elevator trim in here just to make sure I can get it flying straight and level. But now I've got that dialed in, it is almost flying itself. It is a very stable aircraft. Now, unlike some of the other models I've made recently, dropping the flaps doesn't make the nose rise or drop. It has a very neutral reaction to dropping the flaps. Now, that was starting to get a little bit low on power, and as you saw there, the stall is very gentle. The nose just dropped, gave it a little bit more power, pulled the nose up, and away it went. So now I know I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got a rough idea of how slow it will go, and it will go nice and slowly, as well as fly a pretty good clip if you open the throttle, I am genuinely surprised by how well this is flying. A lot of scale planes like this tend to make your life a little bit interesting, but this is beautiful. Maybe not for a beginner pilot by any stretch of the imagination, but if you've got something like a Tundra or a Bush Mule, then this will be great. So here we are coming in final approach. It is super floaty and very, very gentle. Overshot the water just a little bit, and here we are back on the ground. So in summary, I'm impressed. This is a very big model. And to transport it in the back of an average car, you're going to have to undo those two screws in the wings and rotate the wings 90 degrees to even be able to get it in the boot. Those big wings and those and that twin motor and prop setup give it really nice flying characteristics. And it does feel very much like a very posh bush mule, but it looks completely different. So if you have access to water and you've been looking for something that you can take off and land on water that's easy to fly and that looks absolutely and that looks the part, then this new Albatross is definitely worth a look. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.